In this tutorial, we'll show you how to create a versatile pie graph template for different object types like discrete, contiguous, and bar. We'll cover adding objects to favorites, connecting data through user-defined table, making glass material with refraction, using action sets, and incorporating OmniLight in the scene. Start by dragging background from the favorite pool. As you can see, we've imported a 3D mobile model. Now, let's design the screen separately in the Drone Designer. Begin by using a rectangle. Tweak its parameters. Now, apply a bevel to round the edges of the screen. This will improve light interaction and add a realistic touch. Take reference object in source shape. Modify its properties. Now, let's create a refractive material using a snapshot that gives you a real-time output grab of the current scene. Change texture type to refraction and mode to normal P. Changing the refractive index alters how light bends in a material, affecting its transparency and overall appearance. Take another image for the reflection and apply it on the second stage. Enable local reflection. For effective local reflection, it is essential to define a bounding box. This can be achieved by configuring the extended parameters of the material. Adjust texture's opacity. Now adjust material's opacity to get the glass look. Power controls how big and bright the reflection looks. Animate the object. Now let's take Pi Tool. Wasp 3D offers three types of objects, discrete, contiguous, and bar graph. In this tutorial, we'll begin with the contiguous. Two-sided toggles both side render of the 2D face or outline. After enabling Auto Key, animate the Pi Angle. Element animation animates the slices of the pie individually using the interpolation of the SRTV keyframes. Moving on to the next step, let us add text to the pie graph to display values on the individual slices. To do this, use the table text tool and choose pie as the data source. In the table text data settings, Drag default pi data to the table data and set up connection only for the value. Modify the font and text color. Change the text type to a number. Change decimal value to zero and include a suffix. As you may notice, the values are currently placed in the center. To reposition them, access the pi pin parameters, position offset shifts values from inside to outside, with 0 inside and 1 outside. Angle offset adjusts the value in the angular position of the pi. Animate the pi. Give the pie a 3D look by adding a bevel or using extrude. Checking on the inherent source color and animation options will adopt the original pie color and animation. Adjust additional properties such as height, inset, etc. Now we are animating the extrude height.
after completion of animation of Pi Screen Glass and iPhone, it's time to place legends for the data. For that, we already created a table by using tile and table text, which we briefly described in League Table Tutorial. Press F12 to access Favorites Pool and drag Legend into the viewport. Adjust its animation in Timeline. After animation and reflection, our design is ready. Animate the Pi's rotation. Once the template is designed, let's proceed to the data entry part. We'll use the user defined table, also known as UDT, to input and add data. Go to UDT tab. You can either create a new one or use existing WASP templates. In the data entry tab, right click to add a table. Rename it and add the name, data type, and length. Refer to the WASP 3D user manual for detailed information on data types. After completing the process, save the UDT. Go to the Data Entry tab. Input your data. Adjust colors. And add values in the UDT. Return to the design and navigate to the variable sheet. Add the UDT add-in. Browse UDT. Go to Pi Data. The pie color is customizable within the design settings. Optionally, users have the flexibility to link it to an external column. Link the UDT table by dragging and dropping it. Select the data input for each column in the pie data section according to UDT format. To make the legend colors match the pie chart, go to Tile Settings. In the Row Columns section, link the UDT colors with the table color. Since we're using the same UDT for the legends, go to the Variable Sheet and edit the UDT. Enable Show Rank to display ranks. Select the table text. And in the table data, drag and drop the same UDT. Specify the data input for each column. Let's now shift our focus to the particle systems for the background. It's a tool that simulates things like smoke, fire, and bubbles by emitting objects from a source with controlled motion. Begin by selecting a polyline or any other object. Take a reference object for the particles. Now take Particle Tool. Adjust the particle settings in the parameters. In the Particle Object, select Reference Object. 
Change reference type to transform. In the emitter object, select the object to emit the particles. For more detailed settings, refer to the WASP user manual. We have created a material for the particles using an image of people. In the extended parameters of the material, define the rows and columns based on the image grid. Apply the material to the particle system, then cue and play. To render both sides of polygons, set the cone mode to both. After fine-tuning the material and enabling particle reflection on the floor, the background is now ready. Now create action sets to change the pie type. An action set is a collection of command actions that can be executed in a sequence with a single command. It allows users to create a stack of actions that can be triggered all at once. An action set can be applied to the track view or gesture features, or it can be used as a standalone button. Press the F10 key to open the action set. Right-click and create new action button. In the list of available actions, select Set Perm. This action allows you to adjust object parameters while on the runtime. Within the set perm action, add the parameters you wish to modify during runtime. Duplicate the entire action set to include all the actions you've created. In the duplicated action set, modify the parameters. Apply the changes by updating the action set. Cue and play the scene and press the buttons to make the actions happen. To change the object type with the animation, on the timeline, right-click on Animate Angle and disable the Inherit Parent option. Apply a Pause Infinite at the end keyframe. Now in the actions, to animate the pie angle, select play action from play controls. First, select pie 1 as the target. In the parametric section, choose animate angle. Specify the frame value where the animation begins, then click the add button to include this action. Repeat the same steps for the discrete button. Now, let's incorporate some lighting into the scene. Take Omni Light. Tweak the parameters.
Make a light source. It can be a rectangle, sphere, or an FBX. And put it in the same spot as the OmniLight. Create the material for the source and group them together. We'll now create a light controller to manage the light's animation. Now drag and drop the Omni light into the controller. Set the distance between the Omni light and the parent object, allowing the light to move around the shape or object. Enable Motion Trail and disable Frustum Culling for the light source. Adjust object copies and trail transparency. Activate the Y axis and billboard for the light to face the camera during rotation. Animate the parent object to let the Omni light adjust its position accordingly. Now move on to form. Drag and drop the UDT editor onto the form. Browse for the previously created UDT. Embed the UDT. Adjust the settings here to customize the form's appearance. To access the action sets within the form, go to the Player tab. Drag and drop the Action Set button, then choose the tag corresponding to each object type.